Okay, welcome viewers to an impromptu video that I hadn't planned on filming this evening. I'm uh, sitting down here with my EFHL paperwork. Check out this three inch binder I, I found down in the garage that I've now put all the uh, EFHL stuff, the entire rule book, plus all 32 player rosters and, and team record sheets. And this is going to work out real well. There's plenty more room in this for more stuff. So this I'll also put the uh, uh, results of games, all the score sheets and stuff in here as well. But what I've been doing this evening is going through the entire uh, player rosters and changing some of the abbreviations on, on the tackles and the guards on the offense. Uh, previously, you know, what you see here now is OT1 and OT2. I had listed as left tackle and right tackle. And OG1 and OG2 I had listed as left guard and right guard. And that's fine. That's exactly what they were. However, it's I found that, you know, when you're dealing with uh, 11 players on 32 different teams, a total of 352 players total, I think, sometimes it's hard to remember their jersey numbers. I say sometimes it's always hard to remember their jersey numbers. I cite, you, you know, that's why I wrote it all down on these team roster sheets. But by changing this from uh, left and right tackle to just offensive tackle one and offensive tackle two, now when I put set the tackles up on the line of scrimmage, where's the other one? It doesn't really matter whether I set them up as left and right tackles, just as long as they're there, you know. The next play, they may get set up like that. The same is true for the guards, um, because, you know, those figures are identical other than their jersey numbers, so... You know, the same thing. It really doesn't matter whether this is a left guard or a right guard. This is just going to make it a lot quicker for me to set up the formations, which you won't see on my gameplay videos because I will pause the video during that. Um, I want to get it down to 90 seconds, uh, around 90 seconds. If it's 45 seconds per team, and that's about the time that's re that you get in tournament play to set up your formations around 45 seconds for your team so i'm doing two teams so 90 seconds at first i'm going to allow myself you know as long as it takes but i'm, I'm going to be you know building for speed i'm actually practicing that now and of course there's also the matter of the fact that i'm playing on bases with paper prongs so i can't be you know, i can't be aggressive with this i have to be careful to an extent as well but i think it's going to work a lot better i did have to make a slight change on the penalty chart when assigning uh, who committed these uh, generic penalties on the penalty charts. Uh, that took two seconds. It, it took longer just to change all the information in the uh, on the uh, team rosters, but I think it's going to work very well. But what I wanted to do primarily in, in this video is talk about uh, assigning figure poses to specific uh, roles. Now, this applies only to Tudor Fab 5 poses. Folks, there's at this point, there are now thousands of different figures out there with different poses. So, you know, I'm, I'm only talking about these. My entire football league comp is comprised of Fab Five figures. So, I have adopted a specific convention for quickly identifying these by sight. Not even by jersey number, but simply by sight. And uh, this uh, assumes that uh, your teams are, are comprised of the typical Fab Five lineup. Three linemen two backers, uh, two all-purpose figures, two sprinters, and two runners. Now, you don't always get that specific combination in a set, but that's the normal convention. So let me, just, let me just walk you through how I do this. Now, other coaches do it differently, and we'll talk about that. So uh, we're just going to look at all five of the poses here. Now, this is an all-purpose figure. I use these for quarterbacks and for middle linebackers, for punters and holders, and sometimes for defensive ends when I don't have enough uh, 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 tackle and lineman figures in order to, a 4-3 for example, I use three linemen and one all-purpose figure to make, uh, you know, a four lineman setup. Um, not everyone does that the same way, but that's how I do it. And uh, eh, I know that this, is, even if I didn't know this was Randall Cunningham, which I could actually tell you from his jersey number and the fact that he's on the Eagles here, um, I could pick up this figure very quickly on the field and tell you this is either a quarterback or a tight end on offense, or it's one of the middle linebackers on defense, and it's you know the punter or the kicker on spe or the holder on special teams. I can tell you that in instantly. Okay, now uh, let's grab one of these. Um, this is a sprinter 
figure. And I use these for wide receivers and for safeties, either strong or free safety on uh, the defense. Um, it's, I just find these to be, they're not always faster than runner figures. That really depends on the base. But I, it's just the convention I use. I will use these. It's, it's better to have, in my opinion, it's better to have a sprinter figure facing a runner figure at wide receiver and cornerback position so you know who's who by side, again by sight. If you had sprinter versus sprinter and they were wearing a similar color uniform, it might get a little confusing. But uh, now I will say that the uh, sprinter figures are a little imbalanced. They're, they're front heavy. They like to, you know, do this a lot, especially on uh, game boards with hot spots. And if you're playing on a, a Tudor game board, you've got hot spots, and you probably already know these things like to fall down all the time. Uh, I actually am scooting mine on the rear of the base a little too to negate that but with what the having the motor in the corner of my terrible tutor field right now uh, there's very little falling over from any of the bases so we've got that going forward of course they're all crawling rather than you know zooming downfield so that's the trade-off but again i use the uh, runner fi or the uh, sprinter figures and i always get those two make it confused um for wide receivers and safeties and you know even in professional football it really doesn't matter whether you line them up on the left or right side of the line of scrimmage because they, they flip around all the time and you know depending on the needs of the of the package at hand all right now we'll look at a runner figure and i use these for running backs halfbacks and fullbacks on the offense and as cornerbacks on uh, the defense uh, i would also put these in the game as slot receivers uh, if necessary, and also as a nickel back or a dime back, uh, depending really upon what's going on on the defensive line. Uh, might not have enough figures uh, for that on the defensive line, in which case I'd probably use an all-purpose figure, the middle linebackers rather than the uh, uh, runner figures. These two are in balance. These are actually, uh, you know, these like to drift to the left, regardless of what the, the base itself is doing. Uh, this one is this base is pretty balanced for this figure. I bet on another figure this base would actually pull to the right, but um, uh, these are they these also like to fall over because they're leaning forward and they're, they're front heavy. But um, again, this is what I use for running backs and cornerbacks. You use whatever you want to use uh, as long as you can remember uh, what figure is which very quickly just by looking at them. Uh, next, we'll look at the backer figures. Now, some people actually like to use these for quarterbacks, uh, but uh, I like to use these as um, outside linebackers and as offensive tackles. That way they're kind of, you know, those two positions are actually uh, taking on each other, and they've got this wide stance. So a lot of times they'll do a little do -si do and deflect each other, and that can make for some interesting uh, plays offensively and defensively. Um, but again, some people use these figures as quarterbacks. There's nothing wrong with that. It is a very stable figure. Uh, even on, you know, boards with hot spots, these rarely fall over. Unless you've got terrible hot spots the way I do. Okay. And now finally, you know, we have the, uh, the lineman figure. Obviously, I use these as guards. And as, uh, well, depending on the, the defensive formation, I'll use them as defensive tackles or defensive ends. In a 3-4, you know, you get three of these figures in a tutor set. So in a 3-4 formation, I'd use this. Well, this one is actually a center because he's number 59. But, you know, I'd use the other two as the defensive ends. In a 4-3, I would have, to, like I said, I would have to put an all-purpose figure out on the end to compensate for the lack of another um, uh, lineman figure uh, but on the offense you know one of them would be the center and then the two flanking guards and then the backers would be the uh, the uh, the tackles in fact let me just show you quickly I'll very quickly set up an offensive formation here for you and it's going to be much easier now that I've made this a little more generic you have the center you have the two guards I'm not using base width spacing here this is just a demonstration and uh, then you'd have the uh, offensive tackles uh, here he is, and then uh, a tight end on one side, and then I put a, uh, where's the quarterback, 
Nope, that is the quarterback. So I put him behind the center. And uh, there's the tight end, number 87. Put him on the end. And then, you know, it's getting tight over here. Let's assume there. There's one of the wide receivers. And there's one of the others. You know, one set back and probably a flanker because of the tight end on the end to make him eligible. And usually, at least in modern football, at least a halfback behind him. But then you have this extra figure that could be the fullback. It could be a slot receiver. Uh, it could be another tight end, uh, if necessary, or even a wing back if you're the Kansas City Chiefs or anyone that still uses that formation. But there you go. That's a quick offensive setting. And now I'll uh, pull them out of the way and just do a quick defensive. And you've got some lots of flexibility on defense, uh, depending on what you're defending against a run play or a pass play or whatever. If you're defending against a run play, it's better to have more linemen and or linebackers. If you're defending against a pass play, uh, it's better to have more defensive backs. But um, the centers are always also the nose tackle on my team. So there's one. We'll make a 3-4. And uh, then uh, your two defensive... Actually, they'd be spread out more than that. Your two defensive ends. Um, again, you need to be quick at this, especially if you're playing in a league that has gives you 45 seconds to set up your figures after a play. Which is, you know, that's pretty, there's a lot of pressure involved there. There's a linebacker, outside linebacker that can be closer if you need him to. Remember, this is just for demo purposes. There's the other one, but it says these guys aren't used to being set up on a sheet of paper. And uh, your two middle linebackers, in a, actually, if you're in a 3 4, yeah, you would have two middle linebackers. And then, uh, um, now. <laughs> Your cornerbacks covering those two wide receivers on either side, okay. And then uh, uh, we, there's your free safety, usually in the middle, depending on what's going on. And your strong safety, usually on the same side of the field as either the tight end or uh, extra wide receivers. Uh, or sometimes they split coverage. I like split coverage on my safeties, but I, 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 that's not... Uh, golden cardinal rule or anything but there you go there's kind of a defensive formation quick and dirty like that but again just assigning certain players to certain figure types uh, can make it uh, can speed up uh, your gameplay especially when you're first starting out you don't have to use this convention at all a lot of people don't um, but um, if I'm not mistaken this is how uh, uh, the Tudor basic rules are set up. Um, you get a lot of options in that on how to assign your figures. As long as you know what your figure's role is, that's all that really matters. So like I said, do whatever you want to do. But um, we'll see the uh, Eagles again probably in the next video when my, uh, we'll have them uh, face Washington and do, we'll do some fumble scenarios just to uh, get some practice doing that. I really dig in this notebook very organized and uh, of course i've got this little clipboard i feel like an actual coach with this thing uh, you know pin all the rosters and record sheets i'll be using in the game plus uh you know the dice rolling tables can go on that as well uh being organized will speed up your gameplay and you know in in my efho rule sets you know it takes a long time to play anyway so it, it, it's to be as efficient as as efficient as possible and it will save time all right, I hope this was enjoyable to watch, and I will uh, talk to you again real soon. Have a great night.